Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Cafe International. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about $10. This is the digital adaptation of a tabletop game that I do not own. And I'm kind of glad that I played this prior to buying the tabletop version, because honestly, based on what I've played, I couldn't recommend it. Um, tabletop games are typically $40 plus, and... Uh, I'm hard-pressed to recommend this one, and it's $10. So, what is Cafe International? Well, it is a tile placement game where you're going to be trying to sit people of varying nationalities at these tables. And the tables have restrictions on them. So, you might have a United States table, or an Italy table, or whatever. And you can only place um, United States people with their appropriate table. Now, there is some overlap, so you will be seeing, okay, this person is sitting at both this table and this table, so as long as one of the nationality matches, it'll be okay to do that. Um, there's also male and females in this game, and this game is not going to win any awards in the political correctness era. I just, I just, I don't know what they were thinking. This game is fairly older, but um, when you're looking at the portraits of the people in this game, like the people from the United States have cowboy hats and the people from Russia have like fur coats and, and so on. And, you know, turbans. It's, it's, I mean, it's blatantly obvious. Um, so some people might be offended by this. I'm not. I, I just I, I recognize that. You know, we have cultural differences. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. But that being said, some people may be turned off by the fact that, you know, some of the portraits clearly cater to particular cultures. But anyway, there's also a matter of gender equality in this game in the sense that you have to sit males and females down at a table so that there's two of each. Um, whenever you place a person at a table for the very first time, um, they need a female partner to go along. Like, if you place a male down, you have to put a female down next in order to satisfy the equality balance. You can't have two males at a table or two females at a table. It has to go, like, male-female or female-male. And then you can add one more of any type because you'll have one extra. And then the fourth one has to be the opposite of the third one that you placed, if that makes any sense. So that you have two males and two females. So when you're placing tiles down onto the, onto the grid, you have to worry about nationality. You have to worry about gender. That's, that's the two biggest restrictions in this game. On a turn, typically you're going to do one of three things. You're going to place up to two tiles that you have in your hand. There are five tiles that you'll have in your hand at a time. Um, you can also place a single tile at the bar. The bar is sor sort of like a dumping ground for tiles that, it, let's say you can't do anything. Um, you'll have to place the tile at the bar. In the beginning, you'll earn positive points for that. And toward like the end, you'll start earning negative points. So the more you place at the bar, or the more the bar is used, the more negative points you earn for doing that. Um, and the other thing is you can also replace out wild cards. Uh, some of the, some of the guests that show up, um, can be wild. So, uh, they can be put down at any nationality. And then you can, you, as one of your actions, you can swap out a wild card and put it back into your hand, uh, and so that, you know, you have more options. Assuming that you've got the, assuming that the card that you swap it with matches, you know, the, or, I guess, honors the restrictions when it comes to placing tiles. Honestly, folks, I, uh, I didn't like this one. It's just too random for me. When you're playing multiplayer or against the AI, you do have three difficulty modes, but it's just so random. For five or six turns, I found myself placing people at the bar because the nationalities that I had in my hand, none of them were existent on the table. Um, whenever you... Whenever you completely fill a table, the table disappears as well as the nationality. And then you draw a new nationality from the deck to replace it. I had five cards in my hand, uh, and these people were nationalities that were not even there on the table. So I had to keep putting cards to the bar. And then when you do that, you get to draw one replacement card. Well, the card I just drew happened to be a card 
of a nationality that wasn't there. So I was constantly like the computer was just score, score, score. And I'm sitting there and none of my cards match what's on the table. So I'm, it's just the action economy in this game is terrible. I just absolutely terrible. You're at the, you're at the mercy of RNG. If you're not drawing the right cards, then you're screwed. There's no way to mitigate that. You just have to hope that you're lucky and you draw the cards that you need to start playing stuff um, or hope that your opponent is in bad shape as you. Um, that's To me, that's a huge gameplay failure on my part and I would not touch this again because of that. Um, if I were to play it again, it would be the single player mode just for fun, but there are plenty of other board games out there that tickle me more than this one does. So do I recommend Cafe International? Absolutely not. Um, again, I'm not offended by the whole gender equality or the, the various nationalities and how they're clearly displayed in this game, but I'm, I'm repulsed by the RNG of the cards and the very minimal ways that you can mitigate that. Again, if you're not drawing what you need, you're screwed. And I think there needs to be more rules to the game that help to mitigate that. Maybe special abilities that let you get rid of cards, or maybe an action that lets you discard your entire hand and draw five new cards so that you're not at the mercy of a single card draw. You know, it's like Magic the Gathering. It's another reason why I don't play Magic the Gathering. Typically, you're drawing one card per turn. No, not interested in that. You're at the mercy of whatever you draw. Give me some ways to mitigate my, my card draws. So, do I recommend it? No. Sorry, it's just not worth my time. And uh, But if you like what you see here, then by all means, pick it up. I just want to warn you, um, it makes several references to tap this or tap that or touch the screen. So it's clearly a mobile port. Um, and as such, the settings menu is pretty bare. The full screen toggle isn't even in the settings menu. It's, it's kind of hidden in the bottom right-hand corner of the main menu. Uh, because of the color scheme, it's, it's hidden, so it's hard to see. So do I recommend it? No, I think this game could do a better job all around. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.